I've used graphics tablets such as those made by Wacom for over 20 years as a photographer. Let's check out one of their latest models. It's a small guy that doesn't take up much space, but it can still provide some big capabilities for photo editing. We'll look at the product. I'm going to show it in use in three different photo editing applications, and then I'll share some thoughts on what's ahead. So a couple quick disclaimers up front. Wacom did send me this tablet at no cost. They didn't tell me what I had to do with it, and they're not reviewing this video before it goes live. You should know that I did work for Wacom back in 2000, 2001, and it makes me feel old to realize that was 24 years ago. So let's unbox it, and then we'll show it in use. All right, as we unbox this, I want to do a little bit of comparison here. So a couple weeks ago, I got a new pair of Apple AirPods Pros. So I look at Apple as kind of being the standard when it comes to packaging design in the electronics industry. Opening the AirPods Pros involved tearing off a paper strip and then opening up the cardboard box. Everything's all cardboard. It's very eco-friendly, very easy to do. Let's see how the Wacom tablet compares. So I've got the box here, taking a look. First thing I see is I do have a plastic seal. So we'll cut that seal and open up the box. Sliding it out, pretty straightforward. Got a little tab here, I can pull out the tablet, covered in plastic. Underneath that, I have the USB-A to USB micro cable, which I gotta say, that's a little bit of a disappointment in 2024. Both, both ends of that cable are a disappointment. Um, no current modern computer is still shipping with only USB-A ports, and USB micro is just, it's just sad. Also in here we have the pen, wrapped up in plastic. You can open that up. Hopefully, eventually, there we go. So then we have the nice lightweight cordless pen, no batteries. It's one of the things that's nice about the Wacom tablet is it doesn't use a battery. So that certainly makes it a lot lighter weight than tablets that do. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and get this tablet set up on the computer and then we'll start using it. All right, so I've got the tablet set up. I've got the software installed. Let's take a look at using it with three different applications. We're going to look at Photoshop, Luminar Neo, and Lightroom. All right, let's start with Photoshop here. Let's go ahead, do a little bit of picture in picture action. You can see me using the tablet down in the corner of the screen. So one of the most common uses for a tablet is going to be for retouching a portrait. So let's dive right into that. And the way that the tablet works is that the surface of the tablet maps roughly to the screen area on my computer. So let's zoom in on this image here. And one of the common things you might use a tablet for in Photoshop is gonna be for skin retouching, removing blemishes, or getting rid of stray hairs, things like that. So on this photo here, we're gonna edit myself. Uh, not a perfect photo by any means, but let's just take a look at what we could do, right? So I can, you know, use my J key, I can select my healing brush, and, you know, instead of having a clunky mouse or a trackpad, I have a lot of precision here. Now, one of the things that's interesting with the Wacom pen is that it has a little rocker switch on the side, and that's basically two customizable buttons. So I've programmed it that one side of that button is the option key. And so instead of holding down the option key on my keyboard, I can just hit that with my uh, finger on the pen, don't even have to move my hands. And I've now selected a source where I can use some healing brush to start getting rid of some of these blemishes on my forehead. You know, get rid of this big one here if I want. So this provides some nice fine grained retouching. I'm going to hit the zoom key. I'm going to zoom in. There's some sort of little schmutz or something going on in my glasses. Once again, I'm going to switch back to the healing brush. I'm going to make it smaller. 
Now, one of the things you also have with the tablet is you've got these customizable buttons. So you could program those to, you know, work like the bracket keys to make your brush bigger and smaller and things like that within Photoshop. Again, the more that you customize the tablet, the more capabilities that you have. So I'm just getting rid of some of the debris here on my glasses because apparently I needed to clean my glasses on this day. Now I'm going to jump back out, view the image much bigger. Let's look at one more common retouching action, right? We've got this, uh, this fire hydrant here. Hit back to my zoom key, zoom in over on the fire hydrant. Maybe not quite that far. But if I wanted to get rid of that fire hydrant, there's a few different ways to do this. We could do a traditional clone stamp. We could use the healing brush. I can also use one of Photoshop's uh, AI tools, right? And so maybe that's what I'll do here. But instead of using my mouse, I'm going to use my pen. So I could say remove. Now I've got it in, let's say, let's do it in generative AI mode. And so then I'm just going to go ahead and paint over that with the brush. Make sure I get everything there. Let up. It's going to do its generative AI thing. It's going to say that it's removing that fire hydrant and it's filled it in with some foliage like that. So that's using the pen tablet for some basic retouching in Photoshop. Let's jump over to a different application. Let's take a look at Luminar Neo. So here I have a very different type of photo. Now, one of the things that's interesting about Luminar is that they're of a philosophy that you shouldn't have to use a brush or a pen or a mouse to make fine grained selections, that their, their AI power tools should figure everything out on their own. So, Let's put some of that to the test here, right? So I've got this photo that I made at a, uh, at a, a, a brewery during a, a beer festival. Let's uh, zoom in a little bit. And one of the things that you can see is that there's all these power lines, right? There's these power lines coming in over here from the left. And then there's these, uh, these kind of party lights that are coming down from the top. Well. Luminar's got some tools that can help me deal with that. I'm going to go ahead and go into the edit module. I'm going to go to erase. And then they've got this remove power lines option over here on the right hand side. And you'll notice I'm using the pen tablet. It works just like a mouse. I'm going to say remove power lines. And Luminar you know, I don't have to put in a bunch of options. It's going through that removal process right now. It's using generative AI to uh, replace what it thinks are the power lines in this photo, right? So it says that it has now removed the power lines. How did it do? I can hit this little eyeball tool to turn it on and off. So there was the original. Here's with it removed, original removed. And what you can see is that it has removed basically all of the lines from the left-hand side of this photo. It left one string of these party lines, or these uh, party light lines coming in from the right hand side. So I can use a brush here now um, to uh, figure out what I want to do. I'm in erase mode. Let's make that a little bit, a little bit smaller. Let's see if I can get then brush over this other set of lines here coming in. And I've lifted that brush up. We're going to let it do its thing. I'm going to say erase. We'll see how well it does here at removing that one other strand of lights that comes in from the top. Looks like it did a pretty good job. Let's look at one more application. Let's switch over to Lightroom. And I wanted to show that in Lightroom, you know, you're not typically using fine-grained brush movements in Lightroom, much like Luminar, you're typically using, you know, sliders for some more, you know, broader adjustments and things like that. Um, you know, here with this image, you know, if I want to bump up the contrast, I can. If I want to make some broad adjustments, you know, to the color or the vibrance or things like that, I can. But you still can do the brushes in Lightroom you know, it's got the great, you know, new AI powered auto masking tools, but I still find 
that when I'm doing masks, I often end up making a brush mask, right? Because I don't necessarily always want just the subject or the background or something like that. So if I wanted to, for example, um, you know, select one of these elevator, you know, pods or something, I can, you know, adjust my brush size here and I can start painting over it. Looks like I've got auto mask turned on, so hopefully that will help it do a good job. I'm giving it this this paint, and then I can make adjustments to that, you know, to that one image, right? But again, I'm doing this with a brush for precision because my take is that that's the big thing that a Wacom tablet gives you. So let's jump back and let's talk a little bit about why you would use a tablet. What are the benefits? You know, again, I think it comes down to precision. This pen, with this little nib on it, gives me a lot more precision than I get with a mouse or with my trackpad. Now, image editing programs are getting to the point where we don't always need that precision as much as we once used to. So I think, and I, I made this point in a video last year as well, I think that in the long term, the applications for a pen tablet are going to decrease over time because AI-powered selections, object masking, automatic masking, things like that mean that the applications have the ability to more precisely make some of those automatic adjustments on our behalf. On the other hand, they're not perfect. We saw that with one of the tools here today. And so there's still a place where we need to make those manual changes. In short, you know, would I recommend a pen tablet? If you haven't ever used one for your photography, yeah, I would take a look at one of these smaller tablets from Wacom. You know, they work really well. They don't take up much space on your desk. This one is like, I don't know, six inches by about seven inches. They make them bigger. If you're not doing original painting, if you're just doing photo editing, honestly, I think the smaller tablet is a better deal because it takes up less desk space and it still gives you that precision to use the fine grain pen. And don't just use it as a mouse, you know, customize the buttons, right? You know, I have mine set, you know, like I said, for Photoshop retouching, I have one of the buttons programmed to be the option key, but you could change it based on your own uses and you can customize that per application too, right? So that button could be the option key in Photoshop, but maybe if I'm in my web browser, I want to have that button just be the back button, right? So I can go back a web page just by tapping a button on my pen, don't even have to move it. There's a lot of possibilities for customization, and so uh, go beyond the first blush with it, um, but check out the tablet. You know, do you use a tablet? Drop me a comment below and let me know if you're finding it a useful tool for your photography ventures. It's something that I've used, it's something that I've enjoyed, and it's something worth checking out.